Namaste, I'm Stephen Sadler with the Self-Awareness Institute and I, I want to welcome each of you to this webinar series, a course in Simplified Kundalini Yoga of Yogi Raj Vittatiri Maharishi and we are on the third lecture studying the philosophy of life so I want to welcome you to this present moment and invite you to step out of your day, step out of your mind, step out of your past and your future and come into the present moment and just be aware of why you're here there's something that is bringing us together and there's something within you that has been guiding you getting you to read a certain book take a certain course study with a certain teacher that came into your present moment to be here to listen to this because there's going to be information shared in this next hour that is going to direct your mind and open up channels of awareness and enable you to develop yourself in ways that you may not have previously been aware of could be developed and that's one of the beautiful things about studying with the Maharishi is as much as you can learn there's a place of wisdom a place of knowing a place of realization that's beyond the known and the knower there's a there's an awareness beyond the mind and that's where we're going to go today. So welcome aboard. Take a deep breath. And we're going to go on a journey together. And I'd like to invite you to embrace a metaphor. We're going to use an analogy of a jacuzzi or a mineral bath or a hot spring. And I want to invite you to sit up straight because this whole class will be both part lecture or satsang and part meditation. <clears throat> part of the Part of the conveyance will be of information, and part will just be an energy. And so I want you to be in a place where you can be the most receptive energetically as well as mentally alert. And for that, you want to sit up straight and think of your spine as an antenna and just take a deep breath. And now as you breathe out, close your eyes and let us just imagine we're all stepping into a hot bubbling jacuzzi together. And just feel the warmth up your legs as you step down into the hot pool and crouch down go ahead imagine you're bending your knees and take a deep breath and as you exhale just immerse yourself in a warm bubbly feeling just imagine the warmth and that bubbly feeling and that floatiness how you become kind of floaty and weightless and just feel that warmth soaking into your muscles and tendons and bones go ahead and breathe in into the back of your neck and into your shoulders and absorb the tension with the ingoing breath and release with the outgoing breath and keeping your eyes closed just roll the eyes up gaze between the eyebrows we'll focus more on that point specifically later but i just want you to roll your eyes up and gaze into the dark screen of your mind or gaze into the screen as you're looking at me and feel your body relaxing so you want to get in the habit or the practice of learning how to dictate what states you want your body and mind to be in. And this is what um, Swamiji is going to be teaching us here in the philosophy of life. We're going to be discussing the mind, the will, and the consciousness. And what's it all about? So breathe in as we imagine ourselves sitting in this hot tub or jacuzzi of consciousness just floating in a feeling of love and the camaraderie of other spiritual beings that have been called to awaken from the dream and remember who they are and why they were born so we could fulfill the purpose of our existence and so to fulfill our purpose we need to know the self that has a purpose to fulfill so the key to life the key to happiness and peace is really to find yourself man know thyself that's our eternal quest it's in the bible it's in the Bhagavad Gita it's in every one of the major world religions the underlying essence to our development in finding god finding peace it's all finding ourself at the heart of our own existence is going into our heart and feeling the living presence of god alive within us and whether you call that spirit or shakti or whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter as long as you call upon it so let us breathe in as we sit here in the jacuzzi floating in the feeling and the camaraderie of other friends that have been called to enlighten and as you breathe out let go and let's just allow the divine to move through us to the de degree that you are ready and open and able 
So rather than trying to meditate, we allow ourselves to be meditated. And more than just trying to understand information, we're coming into a place of awareness beyond our own mental fact faculties. So breathe in and let us go back to the first lesson and remember what is that that brought us to be here? So this is at the very foundation of our practice is realizing that we've been learning, growing, and evolving. There's an evolution in consciousness that occurring over millions of years of humanity. But even in the last few decades, there has been a radical shift in consciousness occurring, and you're the proof, the fact you're here listening to me. And so Swamiji looked at his philosophy in life had to do with this awakening of consciousness of the planet, and he saw that there were three key areas that we needed to address in our spiritual development. Matter of fact, he defined in his book, Yoga for a Modern Age, I'd like to start by reading a little to you, since this book is hard to find. He said, realization of truth blossoms fully in the higher state of consciousness. When the secrets of the nature, or the secrets of nature and the will become known in their true perspective and are clearly understood. So, the nature of, the secrets of nature and the will, the nature of consciousness, the mind, the will, what are these things? Well, the first thing we want to observe is that our own mind has been developing. And you see the value in that. You see the value of being able to learn and remember information, to be able to have a lot of experiences. Uh, the depth of your experience gives you a greater sense of reward and a knowledge base to make better decisions. Well, in the same way, we are evolving not only our intelligence through self-inquiry, we're developing a capacity to be conscious. And that's what's lacking in most people's lives. They, they go through their life unconscious, not really even aware of what they're thinking, just allowing their mind to run uh, hither and throw, uh, creaming around like a ping pong ball sometimes. And I imagine this has happened to all of us, where our mind can run away with itself and sometimes dictate what state we're in throughout the day and how we deal with life. It can also keep us from the fullness of life and seeing the opportunities being provided, seeing how we're being guided. So being caught in your head can cause you to go unconscious. By being conscious of your own consciousness, you can develop higher consciousness. So there's a, there's a value, an obvious value, we should reflect on in the very beginning. What is the value of becoming more conscious? Well, look at what going unconscious is. We can see that at the extreme, your senses aren't working, you're almost dead, you're just knocked out, say. In a lesser extreme, maybe you're just missing turnoffs on the freeway or making mistakes, missing opportunities. You're just not yourself. You just keep kind of blowing it. You're going unconscious, right? So the more conscious you are, there's more clarity, there's more insight, you find more happiness, more peace. There's a value to evolving your consciousness, where going unconscious is something we don't want to do. And if we do go unconscious, we want to catch it quicker, right? So most people don't talk about consciousness, even though it's a word that's in the dictionary. We don't necessarily think about the difference between mind and consciousness, or our will, our individual will, and the divine will. And this is what we're going to be discussing today, and I want to invite you to look at. So the first thing is realizing there's some part of you that is conscious of whatever you're seeing, whatever you're hearing, whatever you're tasting, smelling, whatever you're thinking or feeling. There's some part of you that is conscious or is observing or is the witness to whatever experience is occurring in your mind and senses or through your mind and senses, whatever relay of energy moving through fields of neurons in your brain or moving through one part of your nervous system into your brain. All these relaying of information creates the experience of life in your brain that your brain identifies with as being you, including all the imprints of who you think you are when you're a baby. You don't think I'm an American or Indian. You don't say I'm a boy or a girl or a Christian or a Muslim. You're just a baby. And then eventually you identify with the mommy and the daddy and that you, you're a certain race or a certain nationality or a certain religion or different experiences. I like this and I don't like that. 
or this hurts and that feels good it starts to create like a matrix of neurological imprints that form the basis of your personality so what Swamiji is giving us is a template to look at kind of like a three-dimensional chessboard these different attributes because we can go in and we can change the programming in our mind and we may need to to let more light out and be expressed through what we think and say and do so through his perspective the first thing we want to do is develop our mind and the best way to develop your mind is to look within and ask yourself who am I to introspect to to know yourself you have only to look but to look beyond just the imprints of what you're thinking to know what you're thinking and know what thoughts that you're thinking work well for you and know what thoughts you're thinking don't work well there may be certain perspectives attitudes opinions and beliefs that you're carrying around that are really obfuscating the reality and maybe impinging upon your ability to communicate well or or to feel love and so as we evolve ourselves and develop ourselves, we're developing our mind and our ability to look at our mind and understand how we think and uh, having an analysis of thought the first step is we have to realize there's something other than the mind that can observe the mind there's a consciousness and that consciousness was there before the form developed and the cells multiplied and a human being was created and that same consciousness exists long after the body is dropped so, and it's expressing through what we call spirit and we all know we have a spirit but yet how many people know their spirit so I want you to breathe in right now and just connect with the life force within you that is you and that's the beauty of working with Shakti Shakti Pad. it's a direct connection with source there's no intermediary step to it just breathe in and know you're alive breathe in and feel the life force within you that is you feel it in your nervous system feel it in your chi feel it in the electromagnetic fields within your body and now feel it flowing between you and me so it's flowing between my eyes into your eyes it's flowing from my voice into your ears it's flowing as an energy that will move from me into you and you may begin to feel it in your body and so this is part of the, the purification one of the first steps of Swamiji's 10 stage plan for the enlightenment of the consciousness is first just connecting with the teacher and allowing yourself to go into higher states and to experience what it's like riding the current up into other worlds and higher consciousness into planes that you can't even imagine there are other planets you can visit other universes you can go other states and dimensions of reality that your mind could not conceive and you're just a breath away so take a deep breath and draw the life force energy into your body feel it in your nervous system feel it in your chi feel it in the electromagnetic fields within your body and now feel it flowing between you and me so there's an exchange of energy and that helps build up and bring out that spiritual energy within you so I'm I'm trying to exercise this energy by engaging you spirit to spirit and soul to soul so the first step you want to understand that your mind is this incredible tool it's like a biological computer you have carbon based chips we call neurons in your brain billions of neurons they're connected through axons and dendrites little nerve fibers and the uh, synapses are the points they connect those are little chemical bonds and this place where these neurons all connect forming like a mesh and it looks very much like a spongy material if you ever actually pick up a brain and put your fingers in it and feel around it's kind of spongy with the cerebral spinal fluid that it's soaking in and all this web of fibers these nerve fibers are connecting all these neurons just like the worldwide web connects all these PCs and in your computer you have little chips out of silicone it turns out that that hold the space hold the energy in a certain pattern or format and the same thing is happening within your mind you hold certain patterns of formats in your brain that are the thoughts that you think and the feelings that are formed but is that you are you the composite of your mental programming the the matrix in your mind the, the all the thoughts and ideas all the wants and desires and all that you don't want to is is that is that set of neurological 
uh, configurations. Is that what you are? No, that's just your personality. Just, just like your your body is an instrument for your spirit. It's not the essence of what you are. One day, when the spirit leaves the body, they'll just be a corpse. The the cells will be there, but they won't have any life force in them. It will be diminishing. So what we are is the life force itself. So there's something other than the mind, other than the body. I want you to breathe in and connect with that life force within you. And from here, just observe, just like a energy running through a light bulb will cause the light to be emanated. So there has to be a filament, there has to be a casing, there has to be a place where that light can shine. And that is you. This spiritual energy that runs through your body lights you up. And so your body's the host and the grounding element. It's the appliance, as it were, that allows consciousness to be expressed through what you think and say and do. So our purpose in life is to develop our capacity to allow consciousness be expressed as clearly and as brightly and as cleanly as it can be. We're here to evolve the consciousness to a higher level higher levels of consciousness from generation to generation and we we see this not without hiccups not without major catastrophes and world events but even these dark episodes in our history also help us to learn and grow and evolve just like some of the most difficult and painful experiences you've had personally may very well have brought you closer to god or helped you develop interpersonally or develop a greater spiritualness in connection with god so let us take this moment to breathe in and connect with that that brought us to be here today. So that inner inclination, that spirit that guided you, seeing that it's now using your mind to hear through the ears, the eyes are seeing, ears are listening, the mind is processing, but there's some other part of you that's gathering in this data through your senses. And I want you to be aware of that. In other words, I want you to be aware of your own awareness. And then there's a will, too. Should I listen or watch this? Or should I tune it out and go do something more entertaining or fun? What, what makes the decision to come, to walk, to listen, or to go? What brought you to be hearing my words in this moment? You say you have a will, but where did your will come from? And how much do you have? And what does it cost? I mean, what do you know about your will, really? You say, well, I can choose to listen or not. Yes, but where did you get the power to choose? And how do you know that it was you that chose to make that decision, even? See, what most people don't understand is what is guiding life to begin with. There is a divine will. And then there's how the human being attunes to divine will. To the degree that they are aligned with divine will. And just look at nature as the best example. Look at how bees work together in a hive or ants. As they work as like one team. They're all part of one collective consciousness. In the same way, we human beings are like cells in the body of God. And there's a will expressing not only through all human beings, but through all of life. And not only on this planet, but throughout the universe. So what we want to do is align our body-mind instrument so our actions, our will, or our karma is aligned with the divine will, with the universal karma, the mind of God, as we are instruments of this higher self that we are. You know, another way to look at it is, are we allowing our own indwelling spirit to shine forth and guide us? Is the body and mind serving as a vehicle to allow this higher awareness or spirit to move through what we think and say and do? And this is the goal. This is the purpose in our philosophy of life. We're here to bring higher awareness into the world. That is the role of a human being, and that's your personal role. And that's why you're listening to me right now. This reflecting on the subject matter, connecting energetically. Both of these are powerful tools in developing higher consciousness. Having a higher consciousness, you bring more happiness and peace. You gain more clarity and insight. You feel more joy and love. You feel more inspiration. This is where you go to get the answers. Going unconscious brings pain and suffering. This is where you hurt others or yourself, act abusive, eat or drink the wrong kinds of things, say things you wish you hadn't said or do things you wish you hadn't done. That's all an act of going unconscious. 
So it behooves us to become more conscious. But we need to have that in our mind. Most people go through life, they're not consciously thinking about how conscious they are. This conversation is new, but it evolves you to a higher level of consciousness as you become more conscious of what your own consciousness is or what consciousness is, you see. So the more conscious you are of how conscious you are, the more you're going to be evolving your consciousness. And conversely, the more you go unconscious, the more unconscious you're going to be. So we want to replace the times that we go unconscious by being conscious more often. We become conscious more often by being conscious of how conscious we are throughout the day, by kind of checking in and saying, well, where am I at? Am I at peace? Let's all take a deep breath and feel what connecting with peace is, because the peace is always here. The love and joy is always here. God is always here. If you're alive, the presence of God is alive within you. And so what you want to do is stay plugged in. And sometimes it's tricky. That's where I can help you. That's where having a guru or a teacher comes in handy. They serve as a beacon. You can simply plug into their energy and it helps align you. So breathe in and bring your hands up. And let's see if we can connect energetically together. And you'll actually feel the energy in your hands if you put your hands up. You just bring it in. You can do this anytime, anywhere. It's just a love offering. That's all it is. We all receive energy. We all transmit it. So if you're staying plugged in, you're staying clear. You're staying conscious, in other words, which means you're going to see opportunities. You're going to get the inspiration. You're going to gain the insight from the learning experience. You're going to have the wisdom. You're going to know what to do. It's all going to flow. The more you connect with this, the more it all flows. You're in the zone. You're in the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is when you're aware of the presence of God in everyone and in everything, everywhere, all the time. It's a spiritual awareness. So breathe in and let us be in this awareness now and then practice being here now. You see, being in the presence. But there'll be times you go unconscious. So anytime you're feeling anything other than happiness and peace, which is your natural state, it's only serving as a reminder to get back in touch. So all your life experiences are pointing out how conscious you are. And as you start paying attention to what state you're in and realize that if you go unconscious, it doesn't feel good. So all that is, is a reminder to become conscious again. And in so doing, you incrementally not only develop the amount of time you're conscious throughout the day. In other words, you become conscious more often. If you go unconscious, you catch it quicker. You don't go as unconscious maybe as you used to in these kinds of situations. You tend to, it doesn't tend to phase you as much or last as long. You rebound faster and quicker. These are the signs of you evolving in consciousness. So this is the next step for most people is learning how to develop their conscious awareness to its full extent. And so these three ingredients, one, developing the mind, because then all the answers easily come together. Wherever you have the question, you have the answer. Two is the will. And you just have to see, is there a harmonious flow? Is there some kind of discord? And you'll find that when you're in the divine will, when you're being guided by spirit, another way to say it, there is this peace and harmony and accord in your life. And when you're Mind is going, no, 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 I want this, or I'm going to make it happen, or you're just all maybe maybe too attached, maybe trying too hard, maybe not listening. Um, then your own individual will, your egoic will gets in the way. And all that is is pointing out whatever needs to be let go of. And when you start letting go of what your mental attachments are or your emotional, um, say, reactions are, and you start just letting go of it, and coming back to God, I like to say let go and let God, what you find is all of a sudden, ah, things are flowing again. So you want to align your individual will with the divine will. You want to develop your mind to its highest capacity. And along the same lines, you want to develop your consciousness to its perfection. The perfection of the consciousness is what Swamiji would say. Um, and so there are three aspects. Looking at... Um, 
the will that your mind has created, what kind of problems have been created by your own will or your desires, and learning how to let go of those mental states and conditions that create discord in your life. Two, being able to solve problems, being able to think through things, being conscious enough to know what's going on. And then there's the perfection of the consciousness itself, God realization. And this is this is ultimately where we're all headed to this great realization. So what is that we're realizing? Well, the first thing you need to realize is your true self is already realized. So any effort you make in trying to attain something your mind thinks it doesn't have and has to get is perpetuating the illusion of being separate or anything other than that which you innately already are. Does that make sense? So what you want to do is breathe in and connect with the part of you that is already enlightened. It's not something that's going to happen one day, although your mind is developing the realization even now, your mind is enlightening even now as more of that light that is you is shining through you because now you're beginning to see, you see your third eye is opening. The metaphor is seeing the light, seeing this dawning of insight to the true nature of the self. You're not this mind. It's, it's like when your own mind begins to realize that you are not your mind. That is a, a leap in evolution that will shift the DNA and is. As human beings, most human beings aren't there yet. Less than 1% of the world has actually reached the state where we are tonight, where we are realizing that there's something to be realized, when we're becoming conscious of our own consciousness, when we're putting forth some effort or feeling and being led to develop ourself to the full realization of the self, to the full realization of God. So we are forming the critical mass that it will create the shift in the collective consciousness of humanity that will enable all of society to live at a higher level of consciousness. And that's why Swamiji gave us these teachings. The Maharishi, Rishi means seer. So a Maharishi is a great seer. He saw, and, and that's why I spent so much time with him. I was so fortunate to be able to take walks with him and, you know, pester him with all my questions and go into some of the depths of the science of how this works and his passion to bring this into this world because he's recognized and saw that we live in an age where this whole sixth sense is developing and very very few people have it awakened yet but it's it's happening in greater amounts and it's happening to you right here right now so breathe in and connect with the part of you that's aware of awakening your own consciousness that self-reflective quality within you that is guiding you is pronounced right now in this listening we made the intention to connect spirit to spirit there's an energy moving between us now there's something that's alive and awake now an hour or two from now you could be engaged in a whole different conversation with a whole different set of emotions that could pull you out of this awareness so I want you to breathe in right now and just connect with me and just be aware of the life force within you that is you be aware that the spirit that you are connect in spirit as spirit feel the aliveness in your body and then be aware of that part of you that is aware of the aliveness within you what is that awareness itself you see this isn't a pedantic argument we're not just playing with the words there's a deeper meaning there's a deeper message breathe in you're conscious of what I'm saying you're conscious of some part of you that guided you to be here. You're conscious of what's speaking through me because it's listening through you. There's something that guided all of us to be here to be listening because there's something guiding evolution and we are tapped into it in this moment. So the longer we can be in the self-reflection of this presence, it will integrate into the mind-body awareness. Did you see that? In other words, the, the more we can kind of hold the experience, the more our associative memories will be able to invoke this state so we can come back to it. 
So what our practice is, brothers and sisters, is really just to connect to source itself, the source that lies within us, that is us. Here's where we find the answers. Here's where we find happiness. Here's where we find peace. By connecting to that which is, lies within us, that is us. So let's go through the initiation uh, protocol once again. Find a comfortable place to sit, and it's better to remove your wristwatch and uh, your spectacles or glasses. Any metal, in other words, is probably better only because uh, of conducting energy. And you want to be have loose-fitting and comfortable clothes. And you always want to sit up straight. You don't necessarily have to cross your legs in the Padma Asan. If you can, that's great. The idea of sitting in the cross-legged posture is to have an erect posture. Your vertebra is your uh, antenna and so you don't want it lying down or you don't like a grounding wire you wouldn't put it an antenna on the your bedspread or you wouldn't lay an antenna down on the carpet because it would keep it from being able to receive and transmit so keep your transmitter up and on and let us breathe in to that presence and just feel the life force within you that is you Feel your heart beating. Breathe into your heart. And let's just give ourselves this subliminal command that we are open to receive. It's through the grace of God that we receive God, that we become aware of God. So let us breathe out our resistance, breathe out our fears. I just ask for the highest and best good. I ask for God to step in. I said, Lord, help me to be a pure vehicle for your love and light and wisdom. And you serve, may thy will be done through me as imperfect as this human being may be I hold this space to serve you and and now you can ask the same within yourself may your body and mind serve as a pure vehicle for your indwelling spirit to shine forth and guide you by the grace of the divine I am purified and blessed by the grace of the divine I am purified and blessed now just gaze at the tip of your nose for a minute that might cause your eyes to cross a little bit but this is actually part of the exercise. Just look at the tip of your nose. And as you do, you probably notice that just through our conversation preceding this meditation, the energy has been moving in your body. And you may actually begin to f feel it flowing up your spine. When you do a third eye meditation, you're actually exciting or arousing, some of you would say, your kundalini shakti. So your current, it's like I said, this is like flicking on the on switch. The current is now flowing up the spine. So now shift your gaze from the tip of your nose up to the point between the eyebrows. And go ahead and drop your eyelids so that your eyeballs aren't exposed to the dry air. And if they just crack open a little bit, that's okay. But I want you to fix your attention to the point between the eyebrows. The atmosphere around us is purified and blessed by the divine. So picture that in your mind's eye that the atmosphere around us is purified and blessed the divine energy descends upon you and you are purified and blessed the divine power may protect and guide you and lead you in all activities day and night in all places the divine energy is protecting and guiding you everywhere you go all the time every day you are protected and guided by the divine and as you were sitting there, so this is an invocation. So as we've got you plugged in, and we've got a certain transference of energy going, we're laying down a track of ideas about protection and guidance. This is like going into the, the uh, field of awareness around your body, this protection. So just see yourself being protected and guided. And then if something's awry, something will alert you. Your mind will be alerted. You see, you'll be able to be guided to safety and protection. So breathe in and feel that, that kind of internal radar developing within you. And as you breathe out, just to fix your gaze at the point between the eyebrows. And then let the feeling there be your guide. You're going to find a subtle current. It's as subtle as trying to find the chi flowing in a meridian, if you've ever used acupressure. It's a very subtle current, but as you lock into the feeling, that feeling serves as your guide. So this is your homing beacon. 
Another way to look at this is your compass. So if you're ever lost and you don't know what to do, you just need to get some direction in life, something just went crazy, well, we all need a map and a compass in life. So your compass is right here between the eyebrows. And as you dial in, it's just like the arrow beginning to point north. It's going to guide you. You're going to get a bearing as you hone in on your own spirit. As your mind aligns with the spiritual current flowing through you, trying to guide you, then your mind will be aligned with your spirit. Individual will, divine will, creating a harmony within you, harmony within you, creating a harmony around you. See how that works? It's very Taoist. You just get into the natural flow. So gaze into that point between the eyebrows. Let that feeling be your guide. Follow that feeling. Follow this feeling down the corridors of your own mind. Even the sound of my voice. Imagine you're listening to the sound of my voice from the point between the eyebrows. And anytime you're distracted by a thought, a feeling, a sound, to see it as a reminder to go back to the point between the eyebrows. So all it doesn't matter if you have a thought. Don't worry about trying to stop your mind. Don't worry about what phenomena, what happened or didn't happen. Don't worry about whatever happens in your head. Just stay connected to the feeling between the eyebrows. Pay attention to the sensation. Recognize that there is a spirit within you, that it's alive and connect with it. Now, as you're gazing at your third eye, I want you to breathe into your heart and feel your heart open and just say, I'm open to receive. And let the divine step into your life by whatever way you call the Creator. I invite you to just open your heart to receive the divine grace. And just say, Lord, step into my life. Guide me. Whatever you, whatever God, uh, whatever name you call your Creator, Whatever made the big bang boom, I just call it God. Just open your heart right now and just say, step into my life and guide me. Show me what my purpose is. Let me serve my will. And watch what happens to your life. And now, as you breathe out, feel, you may begin to feel this current of energy flowing up your spine. Start at the base of the spine. And just feel a light beginning to move from the coccyx bone at the very tip moving up to your lower back, to your lumbar, just, just by your hips and coming up higher, you go into the dorsal section, the middle of the back, and then higher up, thoracic, cervical. Feel the energy moving up your neck into your head, and from the center of your head, the energy will begin to branch out like the ends of a frayed rope or the opening of a thousand petal lotus. Now we're going to be focusing on lotus meditation later. Right now I want you to just focus between the eyebrows, but you may feel this expansiveness or this light that is like like opening up, like blossoming, like thousands of fibers of light, like a thousand petal lotus extending out from the central core in the center of your brain and moving out to the outer regions, the outer regions and the like towards the ears from the middle of your head outward, but also upward and arcing up higher like a sprinkler, getting more pressure and pushing up higher and higher. Feel the energy lifting up to the top of the head. So this kundalini is flowing all the way up to the crown. So whenever you gaze at the point between the eyebrows, you're drawing the energy up. And it doesn't really matter what you feel in your spine. You may or may not feel anything. Just go to the sensation between the eyebrows, affix your attention there, and as you dial in on that feeling and just kind of let go. So rather than trying to meditate, you're allowing yourself to be meditated. You're allowing spirit to guide the meditation. You're not trying to meditate. You're not trying to stop your mind. You're letting go of the doer. And you're just letting spirit guide. And what happens is your mind and spirit just meld together, and that's what we want. So breathe in, affix your attention at the point between the eyebrows. And if your meditation gets soft, or your mind a little squiggly, just start to hone in, dial in, like you're looking at the crosshairs of a scope, 
go to that point between the eyebrows and you'll get your bead this is the homing beacon guiding you home so observe the feeling and now slowly open your eyes again and what I'm going to do when Swamiji would give us the initiation he would walk around the room and he would touch our third eye and then there'd be a point where he would ask us to open our eyes and he would pass his hands around just around the third eye so as I'm doing this just observe the sensation at the point between your eyebrows and perhaps in your eyes so we're just playing with energy and now you can close your eyes again and continue to gaze at the point between your eyebrows so as we're sitting here meditating at the point between the eyebrows the idea is simply you're dialing in on your own life force energy this is a life force energy attunement meditation essentially you're attuning to a current that's already active and alive within you the spirit that you are your mind is becoming present to this divine presence so it's awakening the presence of the divine within you it's a break awakening the realization of this presence of God within you the realization of God within yourself and then you realize that this encasement of the body and mind isn't what you are and the essence of what you are is also within everyone else and everything else and it's in everything and it's everywhere and it's all the time it's not differentiated through form it's only appearing differentiated through the appearances of form so in this way we are all one in this way we're all one in consciousness and all these forms are like little cells in a greater body of being in the universal being in the body of God so think of your think of your individual form it's like being a cell in the body of God breathe in and just gaze into your third eye and as you breathe out now expand your awareness out of your body as if you were connecting with the other cells imagine the cells in your body were all beginning to feel each other and as you expand your awareness out just feel the presence of all of us on the call on the webinar on this class connecting and then all the people that you know and all the people we know connect, connecting and expand your awareness out into the collective consciousness of humanity and out into all the flora and fauna all the plants and animals and microorganisms too for that matter expand your awareness out into the earth itself imagine you could feel the core of the planet and how this electric current was flowing from the south pole up to the north pole in the middle of the earth and in the center of the earth there's an iron molten core and the iron is spinning like a top because the earth is spinning and it's creating a dynamo effect and we're getting these giant currents of electromagnetism whipping through the earth and extending out and especially at the ends the north and south pole so there are these giant fields of energy extending out of the North Pole and reaching out miles above us and in, and through the atmosphere and underneath too coming up underneath the South Pole and so as we're breathing in take a breath feel that life force energy that vital air that prana and absorb that life force energy into your body just internalize it and as you breathe out feel it extending out through you so you and it are one you and the current are of the same we're all connected to the same life current the same spirit same holy spirit if you will so breathe in and let us feel that together bring your hands up again if you like keep your eyes closed put your hands up and this will enable you to just catch more of the energy it just helps you to tune in it's a way of giving the blessing it's a diksha virtual diksha in other words 
Breathe in and observe the feeling in your hands and then absorb it as you inhale. Breathe in and just pull the energy in like you're you're drawing light down your arms into your heart and feel your heart opening to receive. For the more open you are to receive, the more you will receive. It's through your devotion, your bhakti, that this awakening occurs. So let the love in. Breathe in and just say, I'm open to receive. I am open to receive. And as you breathe out, just imagine you're letting go of all your fear, all your resistance, all your all your mind for that matter. Let us just be in spirit as spirit, breathing in and opening and opening. Heart is open, mind is open, breathing out. And as you gaze into your third eye, let us just lay back into the feeling and be in the silence and just merge into the feeling. Now observe the feeling. Observe the feeling within you and around you. Observe the part of you observing the feeling. Observe the observer observing. Turn your awareness around 180 degrees and behold that which is observing your own mind observing this just let your mind behold that there's something other than the mind that is observing the mind so picture a butterfly in your mind or a tiger or a unicorn so maybe you've seen it on a movie theater there's you in one place and there's something on the screen over there. See what your mind is doing as being projected on the screen. See a unicorn running. So there's some space between where you're observing and wherever your mind is projecting the unicorn. Or if you hear a sound. Or if you process arithmetic. Two plus two equals. Whatever it's occurring, it's just an activity in your brain. And there's something other than your brain that is observing what your brain is doing. And I want your mind to make note of that now. As we complete our meditation, I just want you to become conscious of that which is conscious. So we're going to develop this relationship. We're going to develop this awareness through, these, through this course and through all our training. So breathe in and connect with the essence of your own being. Realize that which causes life within you is you. So realize this. Thou art this. So I want to try one more exercise with you before we end today. At the end of this meditation... And while you're in this meditative state, you're in a heightened sense of awareness. So now listen to the sound of my voice. And you know through some electronic means, my voice is being transmitted and picked up in your ears. So just hear or imagine the eardrum vibrating, bouncing, and it's sending a little signal through other nerve conduits from our ear into the brain. And just observe that you're hearing different sounds. 
and you're recognizing certain sounds as words. It's not just any sound, it's a recognizable pattern of sound which we call a word and we have ascribed a meaning to a word. So every time I say a word, part of your mind is relating to what is being said and as I form a sequence of words in a string, your neurons are going from one place to another. So if I say unicorn, you go one place. If I go duck, your mind goes somewhere else. And if I say duck, you're not only getting one strand or current of energy running through the a visual part of your cortex where you have images of ducks. Another strand is going out to where you recall the sound of a duck and perhaps the taste of a duck or a feel of a duck or a s smell of a duck or perhaps Donald Duck, a cartoon. And so just by hearing the word duck, your mind just bolted energy that went into multiple parts of your brain. And this has been measured by scientists. We now know how this works. But there's been some part of you that is aware of all these associations. You, you registered the imprint from that thought of duck or a unicorn. And so this is your takeaway from this lecture. One is the connection with the spirit and we want to develop this by meditating every morning. And I invite you to go to um, Enlightenment Radio. Just Google it. I have meditations going 24 hours a day. Or you can go to Self Awareness Institute. Or you can go to the World Community Service Center to learn the Swamiji technique. But We've got plenty of places you can go to practice every day, and what happens is this connection will develop. The other part is to be observing your mind and being aware, like you are right now, that your mind is beholding there's something other than it guiding it. There's something other than your mind that you are, and it's your mind coming to the realization of the true nature of the self that we are looking to accomplish in this class is that your mind has an erroneous idea based on partial information f and from sources that aren't always the best source, particularly for wanting to know how to be happy and at peace or knowing the nature of our own existence, but innately you know and so now here's how you find it. Every day you sit and you just connect, just roll your eyes up, connect with your own indwelling spirit your spirit will guide you. If you want my help, just think of me. You, psychically, our energies are already connected. Just know that I come in service. I bow to that which brought you to me. I'd like to end today with a meditation for world peace and invite you to first see yourself living in peace. See your body healthy. You are protected and guided by the divine in all your activities, day and night in all places. And let us bless our mother and father, bless your teachers, your gurus, your guides, bless the divine, and the whole world live in happiness and peace. Let us send love to all those people that need healing, anybody you know that has an affliction, a cancer, a virus, a divorce, they just need some love. Let us just take a minute to send some love to all those that need love. And then outside our immediate field, and to all of you, God bless you. I love you as a brother. May you be protected and guided by the divine in all your activities, day and night, in all places. May you feel this love. May you be able to find this and live here. Come with me. Come into the, come into paradise. Come into the garden. It's for real. And now let's wish this for everybody. Let's wish that all the people watching make this connection and and are lifted up into the light. And this light is spread just like a fire through a dry field of wheat that our light spreads out into the masses of humanity and everybody begins to light up and feel that light and realize the light that they are and there is an enlightenment within the collective consciousness of humanity so I'm picturing a world where man and women respect each other that men respect women that women respect women and of course that both women and men respect each other regardless of the gender. We look beyond our gender, we look beyond our skin color, our nationality, our religious affiliations, we realized we're all spirit. 
and we're all we all have the same father we all have the same god we all have the same purpose to make a better world and so we should be thinking about that so let's think about what that better world is no more war no more strife or there's no need for corruption because we want to make sure that everybody's fed, everybody's clothed, everybody has a place to sleep, and everybody's loved. And we'd all rather live in a world like that, wouldn't we? So we need to think that way, and we need to start creating that in our own life. So I want to invite you to picture a world where we all loved each other, that men were respecting women, that we were all working not just for our own good, but for the good of the whole, that Send love to all those that lead, not to judge them, regardless of political party, regardless of political system. Let's just send love to the President of the United States and all the Prime Ministers of this world, all the leaders of each country and religion and company for that matter. May they all enlighten so we can all work together to create the world that we ultimately all want to live in, a world that is just amazing because it's filled with love and this creative energy. We don't have to spend all this money on wars. We're eating healthier foods, green healthy live foods, We're using green renewable energy. There's just more laughter, there's more love, everyone's being taken care of. We need to hold this in our mind. I just ask you to hold this for two minutes. When you hold a thought for two minutes, it makes a stronger impression in your mind. So let's picture a world where everybody really did love each other. What if we just didn't see wars anymore? What if crime didn't exist because you could get what you needed? Everybody had what they needed. Everybody was happy. And we weren't breeding indiscriminately. And we, because we were healthy, we didn't have so much disease. And we took care of people so that people weren't alone. There was more light, more enjoyment from work. We could enjoy the contributions we were all making to each other, to our economy, through our society. Let's picture a world where there's no more weapons and destruction. Let's picture a world where people are smiling and healthy and they're happy. Let's picture a world where we all awaken to the reality that God never left, that the kingdom of heaven is right here, right now. And we only to have open our eyes to see Amen.